<laughs> what I'd like to do is to throw you into a black hole. You wouldn't be the first. <laughs> <laughs> In the name of physics. Now, I you think would be the first. I, uh, I think it's going to mean that you're going to meet a very noble end, have a very wonderful exit from this universe. But in order to observe you as you exit our plane of existence, as it were, right. I want to kick you out with two watches. OK. This one, which I want you to put on your back, right. is going to be the one that we can observe. <laughs> <Is that what's laughs> going to... All right, there we are. Sorry. <laughs> Is this how you're going to collapse my mass? <laughs> <laughs> is that a bit... Let's just do is the that, straps is that up. Is that how black holes work? <laughs> <laughs> just some bloke with a really tight backpack on. <laughs> <laughs> I already feel implosion-y. <laughs> <laughs> and I'd like to give you a watch. Have you got a watch? I've got a watch. Oh, you've got a watch. And a second hand ticking away. Yep. That's good. Right. So what we're going to do is we're going <laughs> to... Right. It's low voltage. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to Where are it. my safety goggles, if Brian? It <laughs> <laughs> if it'll make you feel better, I can get some, but it won't help. No, right, fine. <laughs> so if you turn around yep. so we can see this clock, and I'm going to turn the clock on, and there it is. So it's whizzing forward in time. And I want you to face the blackboard, the Eye of Harmony. That's the black hole there. So what I've done is I've speeded time up just so we can see it ticking along. This is the rate that time's passing for us now, and it would be the same on your watch here. Right. And I'm going to ask you to move slowly towards the event horizon. Very slowly. <laughs> That's it. How do you feel? Like this is slightly too slow. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right. We've... But you see what's happening. If you stop there, you're approaching the event horizon, and time on the watch that we're looking at attached to your back is slowing down. How's the time, though, on your watch? Exactly the same. It's ticking along at exactly the same rate. Now, you might start to feel a bit uncomfortable because um, for these sort of stellar mass black holes, the gravitational force on your feet would now be significantly stronger than the gravitational force on your head. Um, this is called spaghettification. <laughs> <laughs> Why? <laughs> so, so, so you're beginning to get slightly taller. Right. And eventually, actually, as you approach the event horizon, I think really you get so tall that you'd just be a long line of atoms disassociated. But anyway, let's ignore that for the moment. Carry on. <laughs> so see... well, I don't know why I feel slightly in awe of a picture. <laughs> <laughs> right towards the black hole. And what we see there, stop, that is on the event horizon, and we would see Rufus's watch strapped to his back freeze. It would stop. But what's your watch look like? Still going. Still going at exactly the same rate. This is precisely what Einstein tells us would happen as Rufus fell into the black hole. We'd see time freeze. We would see an image of Rufus just like that, actually. That's quite... Powerful. <laughs> How long can you stand on one leg just there? <laughs> We'd see a frozen image of Rufus on his way across the event horizon. Time would stop. That image would still be there. It would be a sort of immortality. Whereas from Rufus's perspective, time would pass as normal. He would pass over the event horizon. He would approach the singularity and be crushed to an infinitely dense point. <laughs>